we're back. Uh, okay. We're back. Uh, we're so excited, Nancy and I. We're like two autism mom fans because we have with us on the phone right now Cornelia Kennedy Suskind. She is the mom who is featured in uh, Life Animated, the wonderful film that we've been talking about that Nancy and I got to see in the last 24 hours. And I, I, I was just saying to her on the phone that we're so thrilled that you know that it really features the entire family, but we're thrilled that we have Cornelia with us because uh, you're an autism mom, and you're, you know, I really want to talk a little bit about who you were before autism because you were an amazing force of your own, a writer who wrote for People magazine, an editor for Family Weekly magazine, a managing editor of New England Living, um, and later worked on the PBS documentary series Frontline. You were a woman with a career. Uh, yeah. And, and a whole lot of things happened when your one of your sons ended up regressing into autism. And all of that is brilliantly depicted in the film. We really encourage everybody to see the film. It just came out on July 1st. But Cornelia, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's a real pleasure. I assure you it's all ours. Um, but I, I, I wanted to start by just uh, as I was watching the film and I saw this brave, kind, considerate, together woman, and I wanted to know more about her. I wanted to know more about who you had been because clearly, you know, the fact that you homeschooled him for a couple of years, you were clearly articulate and intelligent. And I thought, okay, we, you know, everybody's a little bit familiar with your husband, who's a Pulitzer Prize right. winning writer. Um, but right. I wanted to know more about you and how your life changed when this all happened. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a great question. Um, because it's a question that so many, many mothers face, whether they stop working or whether they continue with their career. I feel that, you know, as moms of children with autism, people with autism, adults in my case, you know, you're often so defined just by that fact. And, of course, your time and your energy is usually channeled in that direction. Mm -hmm. So it is, you know, it's, it's kind of poignant that, that our past sometimes gets obscured or who we are as people, um, aside from being just a mom and doing the best we can. I, I was, as you say, I was a journalist for many years in New York and Washington, D.C. and Boston. Um and I continue to work. Our older son, Walter, is two and a half years older than Owen, who is the subject of Life Animated. Um, Walter is also in the film. Mm -hmm. um, and I continue to work after Walter was born and planned on working when Owen was born. But um, I did stop working. I worked part-time freelance after Owen was born just because I had two kids. And then we moved to Washington, D.C. two and a half years later, and that is when Owen's um, regressive autism came to the fore. He had no symptoms whatsoever before. Right. Um, so I was planning on going to Washington, continuing as a journalist, and when Owen was diagnosed, I put those plans aside and just focused completely on his care and education and Walter's as well. So I haven't, I haven't worked as a journalist for a very long time. I sort of work as a shadow editor for my husband. Mm -hmm. um, he's a writer of books now. Um, but I've actually gone into creative pursuits um, that are very fulfilling to me. Because even though Owen is 25, I still spend, I would say, a day a week on his life. Mm -hmm. And he isn't living with us, but just managing his care and work and other things um, that I'm sure you're very well aware of. <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah. We are. And we're very well aware of that whole career thing that changes drastically when uh, I spent 25 years as a television producer and uh, right. Shannon was in I theater. I was a college professor. College professor. And, and, and here we are. Right. And here we are. Yeah. It's, right. it's, you know, I, you the know, only way so you can, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Go ahead, Penny. Years, years ago, I had a, when we were in Boston, uh, rather in Washington, I had a luncheon just so moms 
could get the heck out of the carpool line and the therapist's office and everything. And I made name tags with our former careers. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. We, were, we really are more than just drivers and yes. interveners at once upon a time. Well, we want to talk, I, I just want to kind of give a synopsis for people that have not seen the film yet, because it just came out. Uh, basically, sure. the film is the family's journey um, as Owen, uh, your younger son, uh, you have two sons, as you mentioned, Walt, Walt, his older brother, who is just, uh, what an amazing big brother he is, yes. by the way, and your husband, and your journey as Owen regresses you know, around the age of three, and you detail that that journey, and then how really you and your husband find Owen's voice through animated Disney movies, and then as Owen gets older, you follow the journey to independence, and many twists and turns along the way, many beautiful right. and uplifting, some very, very emotional and very disturbing, such as bullying, and and it's warts yeah. and all. And how did that feel, Cornelia, to have, uh, there were a lot of home movies that you had from his early life, and and there's, uh -huh. there's also brilliant animation used in yes. the film, and it's based yeah. on your husband's best-selling book, I might add. Yes. But how did that feel, having the camera at these vulnerable, being so open and vulnerable for the camera about your life? Well, you know, it was, I'll tell you, in terms of that early footage, um, this is a little bit of an aside, but I think that other parents can relate to this. In terms of that very early footage, um, there's a scene in the film where Owen, before he regresses, is playing with my husband in the leaves, yes. playing a game of Peter Pan mm -hmm. and Captain Hook. And Owen is, you know, is verbal and engaged and, and, and seemingly fine. I had not seen that footage mm. until I was sitting in an audience in Sundance watching the film. Mm. Oh, my goodness. I saw, the, I saw the film for the first time in Sundance in the audience. And... We had shot that film right before we left Boston, and by the time we got to Washington, Owen was starting to regress, and I could never bear to look at that footage yes. from the before time. I just couldn't do it. So that, that, as you can imagine, was incredibly emotional for me. But when Ram and I decided that he was going to write a book about Owen's life, it was, as you can imagine, a very difficult decision and something we talked a lot about. Ron is very public, I'm very private. Um, but Owen had come to us when he was about 19 and said, I wish that people understood who people with autism are and what they're like. And he used the Disney analogy by saying, they don't see me for who I am. I'm a diamond in the rough mm -hmm. from Aladdin. Mm -hmm. And it was at that point only that we felt comfortable even thinking about writing a book about Owen's life. Because obviously when he was a child and th therapists and people were saying to us, you, you know, you're writers, you should write a book about autism. A, we were so in the trenches of every day. There was no possibility that I could step back enough to look at what, you know, couldn't even think about it. But the bigger issue is that it was Owen's life, and he, his privacy, he didn't have a say in it. And we would never, ever have done something like this without his complete, you know, cooperation and blessing and understand, really ability to understand what we were doing. Right. You saw um, that you could become really his voice and show his journey, and that was something he wanted. Exactly, exactly. So it was a big decision. It was a tough decision, especially for me, as I say, to open up our life. And we said to one another, you know, when we were writing the book, it can't be, it has got to be brutally honest. And that means the good times and the really difficult times, because any parent who has walked this walk will feel that it is completely disingenuous if we don't include the pain. And so we made that decision, and it was a tough one. But I'm, I'm really now, I'm really, even though, it, you know, I cringe sometimes, especially there's some scenes in the book that I think, oh, God, you know, what do people think of me? But 
you know, you just have to put it out there, I think, and be really honest, because parents' experience is very real, and they know when something is real, and they know when something is sugar-coated. And I think the autism parents think you're heroic, Cornelia. I, I, I do think, and I don't, I don't even want to say where, because I don't, don't want to give it too much attention, but earlier in the show this morning, um, Matt Asner did a review of uh, one of the reviews that came out for the film in which the criticism was that it, you seem awfully joyful. And there are a lot of us that are really befuddled by that. Um, and I know, I know what you're referring to, and I was so befuddled because do you know what my one criticism of the film is? I have one criticism. What is that? And that's so personal. It's that I am actually have a really good sense of humor, and I said I come across as the weeping pain mother oh. in every scene. Oh. I'm constantly crying, and I'm not really a crier. But you know, when someone's asking you about the mother, so how someone can say that I come across in the film as joyful? I have no idea. Well, because and I think there, yeah, I, there I, was joy. I think who comes across as joyful the most is Owen, yes. quite frankly. But there was and, joy, and, and you took joy in him, yes. so I don't... It, you and your but, husband. But the and fact that, son, it's, I, that you're too joyful? Yeah, no, no. Um, I, I agree. Me. That was an outrageous comment. It's and just so I, misguided. I, I, yeah. I agree, because, because I think any parent of a, of a child with autism or a person with autism... It's ludicrous. I mean, joy. Of course, there's. I think the root of our story is that we were able to tap into Owen's joy, yes. and we are a joyful family, and we really love one another, and we really have fun. And that. And are there hard times? Sure. Are there very poignant and emotional times? Absolutely. Yeah. But we're just like any other family, you know. Um, well, you say you, you know. There's a moment in the film, Cornelia, where Owen asks you, Mom, why does life have to be so hard and so tragic right. sometimes? There's a, there's a moment where something happens that I don't want to give away right. that, yes. that is a particularly emotionally painful thing for him. And you say, you know, son, that's the way life is. It yeah. has its beautiful moments and its very tough moments. And it's just so honest. And I, I got to tell you, I walked away from it going, now there's a woman I would love to be good friends with. Mm -hmm, I thought, mm -hmm. I, I was like, oh, oh I so, so enjoyed nice. you. I so enjoyed you. So Thank you didn't you. come off as sourpuss at all. There, there's there's <laughs> another you. comment made, and I think you make it. I wrote it down in quotes. Who decides what a meaningful mm -hmm. life is? Mm -hmm. Did you say that? Yeah. I said that to a therapist. And it was a it was a line that Ron actually said to me when I was when Owen was quite young, maybe eight or nine, and I was really really in despair. Mm -hmm. You know those moments mm -hmm. where you just think we're you know there's just not a lot of light here, and where are we at it, and how is he going to live? And Ron is so um, optimistic and positive in his outlook in general, and he just said that to me and I can't even tell you what uh, an anchor that was for me and what a bright light and I referred back to it for years you know mm -hmm. who decides you know why is Owen less less able to have a full and happy life well there That's because he has challenges there's some scenes in the film and I don't want to give it away where some pretty impressive people come into Owen's world and there is so much joy in the room between Owen and other young people with I developmental know. delays and you know autism and other and you've never seen such joy on faces yes. right Cornelia uh, I know yeah I know I mean I what they what they didn't show was me just again crying on the day it was it was one of the happiest moments of my life it really was it really was yeah, one of those moments um, you cherish and, and we should and say that life capacity for yeah we should say that that the the title life animated comes from this sort of epiphany that you and your husband had that the way to reach owen was through his obsession with disney animated films and it starts with just a, a term he started saying juicer voice which right related back to a Disney film, correct? Correct, correct. So 
Owen was certainly, um, you know, using echolalia at that point, but he kept referring to the, using this one word, and it was juicervos, 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 and I, of course, thought he wanted juice, and he was, in fact, reciting a line from The Little Mermaid, Just Your Voice, because when we watched that film together, he kept saying it, and then there it was, the scene, and I, we put two and two together, and that gave us great, even though he was practically nonverbal, it gave us great excitement and hope that he was making a connection between what was going on in the sentiment and the meaning of the film to his, to his experience. And I, I was able to read uh, something that you had written about uh, affinity therapy, taking the things that, um, that that our kids find an affinity with and using them. I, I, I thought it was particularly interesting. One of the things that, that you said in the article that I read was that you had been sort of what we call here project manager, Ben, you know, while your husband was working, you had so many things that you were taking care of, but that you really... Right that uh, you, you expressed, and I'm going to paraphrase, and then you can fill in, but you, you made him sort of uh, captain in charge of this area of the therapy. And, and I thought that was particularly brilliant of you because sometimes the dads get disconnected along the way when, right. when therapies are happening. Right. And I thought it was really brilliant of you that you made sure that your husband was front and center in this particular aspect of Owen's development, and I wonder if you could talk just a little bit about that. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, part of it was circumstantial because, as you know, we only have two arms and two legs and 24 hours. Yeah. Um, and part of it was that Ron's personality, I mean, and a large part of it, of course, was wanting him to be engaged, and that was never an issue because, you know, though Ron has been a journalist and writer his whole career, he really should be a camp counselor. He's, <laughs> he has a great, he, he has a great, great ability to connect with children, to do voices, to do jokes, mm -hmm. acting, all kinds of stuff. And I, I'm really not inclined that way. <laughs> I enjoy it, but I'm not, I'm not particularly gifted, and he is really gifted. Um, so it was partly it was the natural division of labor because that's what he's good at and that's what he gravitated toward. And he was always extremely involved in, in the kids' lives. Um, in about 2000 when Owen was, what would that be, seven, right? Uh, no, nine. Um, Ron was left the Wall Street Journal where he was full time and started writing books full time. So he also had the great gift of flexibility in his schedule. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very important, as you know. Yes. And we were very fortunate to have that be the case. And also your son, Walt, Walter. Um, yes. Really, I have to just say, what a, what a amazing young man he is. And, and, you know, he really comes across as so compassionate, caring, and loving as a brother. He, he, you know, it's hard as a mom to not sound, um, you know, self-congratulatory, but he, I, I take little credit. He really was born that way. He's, he's an incredible man. Um, he's 20, he's almost 28 now. He's 27. And, you know, like any brother, like any sibling, um, there were times when he would rather not hang and not be seen with his brother in middle school and high school. And we worried, you know, we worried, is he going to, is he going to take off and, and go in a very different direction and leave Owen behind? But he's an amazing man, and he, on his own, I mean, you know, hopefully the signals in the family life we created gave him the message that we were all in this together, but he, he's an extraordinary brother, and they're very, very close. I always said we had two children on absolute opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> well, so Walter is the most outgoing, has the most friends of any human I've ever known. Is you know? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Owen's got Owen's, Owen's got a, a lot, lot of friends. friends too, and he's pretty outgoing. He's I mean, pretty outgoing. He, he is. He has become as an yeah. adult. He has really become. He has become. 
Has anybody else commented? I found it particularly ironic that your older son's name is Walt. Yes, I did. And a Walt Disney. I, I th and I thought it was a great, uh, I, I love it when moments come full circle. And I'm not going to give away any of the particular poignant moments in the film. But the fact that there, there are two very pivotal moments with Walt that center around his birthdays. I, I thought that was particularly lovely from the director's point of view. The Walt, the Walt reference is completely coincidental, beautifully coincidental, but um, he is named after his grandfather, Walter Suskind, um, who was Ron's dad, who died when Ron was 14. So that was a prenuptial agreement. He was going to be, <laughs> there's going to be Walter. I went right into the delivery room begging for anything else, but now it's my favorite name. <laughs> and, and for um, great yeah, reasons. Yeah. All the way around. Yeah. So yeah. where, where, where does life go from here, Cornelia, in terms of the film and where your sons oh, are, your husband, where you are? Yeah. What? Well, we, um, we have all been, uh, four of us have been traveling around quite a bit um, to film festivals with the documentary Film Life Animated. The film opened in New York and L.A., as you mentioned, this past weekend. Um, it's opening in Washington, D.C., this Friday, and Ron and I will go down with Walter to do um, Q and A's um, after the open. Um, Owen has gone back. Owen's been doing a lot of promotion, and he's just—you know—I was so worried that that process of the film coming out and Owen being in the limelight would be would be very disruptive and disturbing to him. And it has absolutely been the inverse. I mean, I've been exactly. very careful, obviously, but he has grown so much to see this kid. He's not a kid, I know, but to see Owen on these stages running the Q&As, <laughs> full, amazing. incredible, amazing answers. And to think that this was once, in, you know, a nonverbal child, it gives such hope to our viewers, yes. Cornelia. I know, I know, and it's just, uh, you know, I often meet mothers, much, much younger children after screenings or book signings or film festivals, and it's obviously a very emotional experience for any parent wow. who has a child on the spectrum, but what I say to these parents that I meet, and they say, Do, you know, is there anything that I can hang on to, and I say to them very honestly, in a million years, I would never have imagined that Owen would be where he is right this minute. I mean, it isn't magic. It isn't, it, you know, it, there's no cure. I am in no way suggesting that. But the strides that he has made year by year, bit by bit, therapist by therapist, are just stunning to me. And he's just, um, so he has gone back to his his quiet life on Cape Cod, not so quiet. He has mm -hmm. three jobs. He works at Toys R Us. He works one day a week. He works at the Regal Cinema. Um, and he works at uh, the Animal Shelter. And then he has his own radio show on the Community College Station on Cape Cod. Love it. And his name is DJ Animator, where he plays, guess what, Disney music. <laughs> <laughs> he has quite, he's developed quite a following. Um so he's settling back into his, his quote unquote normal life and Wonderful. very happy to do so. So what, um, when you say that these mothers come up to you and you say to them, you know, you had no idea how far your son would go. If you right. were to give, if you were to give any advice to, you know, the, some of our viewers out there who are in that despair, who are right. in those moments right. of it's that dark tunnel, they don't see the light yet. Um, right. What? Right. What would you say to them, Cornelia? What? Do you, what? I, I mean, I, know, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you have any no, kind of no. advice, it's a, it's a very good question because you know, with Owen being 25 and looking back on this road and going through the process of making the film, I really have thought a lot about what would I tell my younger self when I was going through the most difficult periods, and I would say honestly, it's. It sounds so pat, but have faith, believe in yourself, believe in your ability to know your own child and to, and to follow their joy, to get in there. And even though it seems silly and even though people will tell you it's not a good idea, 
I think believing and trusting in what your child is interested in and following that in whatever way can bring joy to him, her, and your family is the absolute key. I'm sorry, I'm waving because a fellow autism mom has just walked into the outer part of the studio who has two uh, sons on the spectrum who is quite an inspiration. Uh, who is done her, is doing her own series of documentaries? Well, we Babe may, at the we Arrow. might make her come in. We might in a make her come in. But, but um, we're it, running it, out of time. But uh, I want to pause for a second, Cornelia, to just show the trailer to our viewers, oh, and then we're going to come back to talk with you for a couple more minutes. Can you stay with us? Terrific. Okay. And so Thank here you. is the trailer for Life Animated. You must see it here. It there is. is a boy who is just like Got other cleaner? boys until one night he sees from his window. A storm on the horizon. Howie, oh, who are you? I'm Peter Pan, and you can. All of a sudden, at three years old, Owen vanishes. The doctor says, let me explain what autism is. Some of the kids don't ever talk again. I remember thinking, I'm just going to hold you so tight and love you so much that whatever is going on will go away. We're beginning to give up hope. And one day, we're watching the Disney animated movies. And he says he doesn't want to grow up like Mowgli or Peter Pan. What the hell just happened? <laughs> and all of a sudden, it became clear to us. He's using these movies to make sense of the world he actually is living in, our world. So at that point, we began to speak to him in Disney dialogue. When did you and I become such good friends? <laughs> Whatever works to get to Owen. I've been scared my whole life of growing up. Peter Pan doesn't want to grow up because when you grow up, you lose all your magical and childhood times. My hope is that he is independent enough to be able to grow older on his own. When I look in the mirror, I see a proud autistic man ready to meet a future that is bright and full of wonder. He's going to have to fall and fail. We're not afraid of that as we used to be. I just can't believe how far Owen has come. The future, I'm still searching for it. Who decides what a meaningful life is? It's like I always say, children, children got, got to, to be free to lead their own lives. lives. Welcome back. <laughs> we're, we're just so busy uh, cavelling. That's what we're Kvelling. all doing here. And, and we just we just brought in Dana Piero, uh, another documentarian, and she saw the film. And what do you say to Cornelia? Bravo. I mean, that slice of life spoke to me in so many ways. I saw different aspects of my children. I saw aspects of children, of friends of mine. And I, my younger son actually rewound Disney movies, and we knew what he was talking about. It's a wonderful thing when they can communicate through another medium. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, so Cornelia... I, I, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for being with us. And I wanted to talk briefly about the fact that the film is out now in movie theaters. And um, are, are, is it wide release at this point, Cornelia? It is. Um, it's opening around the country. Um, and if, if viewers go to lifeanimateddoc.com, doc.com, you can see every city and where it will be opening. We'd love for everyone, all of the community, and, and all of your friends to see the film. An independent film is a, is a high wire act under any circumstances, and we would love people to understand who our children are in a, in a deeper way, and, and hopefully you will after seeing the film. It's an We're important Sh film. And Shannon has a prediction. And I said this earlier, I know I'm not the first person to say this, but I, I, I'm 100% sure that this you are going to get an Academy we're, Award nomination. We're going yes. to see you out here in L.A. for the uh, Oscars, and we want to get together. The three of us want to take you out for a mommy lunch, a mommy lunch to That's talk about our lives before and after autism, okay? I'm, when you come out for the Academy Awards. 
It okay, is. Okay, we'll keep our fingers crossed. It's already written. And ladies, it, thank you so much. Thank for, you. For and, bringing me and, and for talking about the film. Oh, we, we so enjoy it. And I, and I want to say this. I think, you know, as autism moms, we so appreciate it. But I really want to say to all the autism moms out there, get your boyfriends, dads, and significant others to come and see this movie, too, because it's an important film for the dads to see. It's very important, being a single mom. That was the thing I loved the most. I loved that. The mom was capturing the moments of the son and the dad. Yeah. And the dad's connection and the dad's dedication yeah. is what made this film happen. Yeah. Truly, truly yeah. lovely. Yeah. We loved your family, Cornelia. Yeah. Thank you for joining thank us, Cornelia. So Are we out of town? We're yeah. totally, we're past okay, time. We're past time. <laughs> we we want to thank you for joining us. We want to thank all our viewers. We want to remember our favorite four letter word, hope. Yes. And on behalf of autism moms everywhere, Give your kid a, kiddos a hug from us. And yourselves a hug from us too. Bye-bye yeah. for bye now. Bye-bye.